an opportunity has arisen to be mistress of the King of England, you could secure for this family incalculable wealth and position. Do I have a choice? No. Oh God. This movie really gets me. I mean, <sighs> hear me out. I love historical fiction and I actually really like Philippa Gregory's take on the past because I think that at times she provides kind of an alternative. What kind of annoys me though is that there's obviously a depiction of Anne Boleyn that is so far from who she was. And you're gonna ask me, but how do you know that? We don't have her actual letters and everything. No, of course we don't. But we do have contemporary sources that really show us that she was not that kind of vindictive, manipulative, and even worse than that, she's quite mean. I love Natalie Portman, don't get me wrong. Beautiful, talented actress. But she's not a good Anne Boleyn in that movie. Maybe she would be a good one in another movie on Anne Boleyn. But on that one, she really isn't. If you can. What I love, though, about Philippa Gregory's take, you know, that was then take into a movie, was the fact that she gave the spotlight to Mary Boleyn. And though I don't like that she had to somehow to pit the two sisters against one another to do that, the good one, the bad one, the angel, the whore. <laughs> I like that we have Mary Boleyn with a story um, where she's portrayed kind of like a kind, gentle woman. However, the whole history is so wrong. And, and that's where it gets me. It really gets me in this movie, and I'll go into details for you, but what gets me in this movie is that really, there is a good story to say about Mary Bell and there is room for interpretation, for thinking about it, for trying to put her back into the spotlight, but may maybe not at the expense of Anne Boleyn, maybe not at the expense of history. The character of Thomas Boleyn is as equally annoying uh, throughout uh, the movie. He is feeble, uh, the relationship with his daughter is really bad, he is just following orders, he doesn't really care about the well-being of his children and all of that could not be further from the truth. Please read the great book uh, by Lauren Mackay. Uh, I put it there, go and get your copy if you want to know the story of Thomas and George Boleyn. Lauren Mackay, Dr. Lauren Mackay, spent her own PhD on these men and restored their reputation, put them back into the light, put them back into who they were through the sources. And so here the depiction is completely out of place and is really not working. Let's go through some scenes where I debunk what's happening and I tell you the real history, but also I tell you my take on the characters and the portrayals. Okay, this one really gets me. We have Mary Boleyn caring for Henry VIII. Absolutely ridiculous <laughs> in the way that he would have had his physicians, his own nurses. There's no way that she would have been like, looking after him and having this type of, of conversation and having this type of closeness and intimacy from the beginning where he had time to kind of like fall for her um, personality. That really didn't happen. What's so uh, interesting though that is that we don't really know if there was ever anything between Henry VIII and Mary. We believe that there might have been, there is like speculation that she might have being a mistress, but that actually in the evidence, in the books, in the in the in the in the primary sources, and in the good when I say the books, in the good history books written by you know historians, who are actually do their jobs, there's like always this. Well, we're not sure. So though I do appreciate that when we're not sure in the historical fiction, it, we are allowed to speculate. And here we have the story, but I think we could have made it a bit more 
you know, believable. Like here, having this woman caring for the king, absolutely not working. Her being this kind of angel nurse looking after him. I mean, I'm rolling my eyes here. Like, really? Like, do we really believe that? That would not have happened. However, if there were any type of attraction, yes, but it would have happened at court. It would have happened, you know, um, during festivities, a celebration. It would have happened where he would have caught her eyes somewhere and be like, hmm, quite interesting woman here. And so here we would have had, I think, something more plausible. But what does it remove? It removes that type of scene of intimacy closeness that I think um, the showrunners really wanted. But as a historian, and when you watch it, and when you love history, not just a historian, you history lovers, you watch it and you're like, eh, I don't really buy it, do I? So this is it, where the King of England sleeps. And reads and writes. All right, this is quite, <laughs> this is quite cute. <laughs> So this is it. This is where you sleep, and this is where I write and read. Like, oh, uh, <laughs> I mean, I don't know. It just makes me cringe. This scene completely makes me cringe. Um, but we have basically Mary Boleyn seducing um, Henry through her kindness, through her um, modesty. She's almost the perfect mistress, the perfect wife, potential wife. Do you see what I mean? Like, she's like always doing the right thing, always saying the right thing. Obviously, in that movie, they, they declare that she's actually married when she became a mistress to Henry VIII, to William Carey. Again, we don't really know if there was anything between them, but it, it might would have happened during that, you know, um, that time where she was actually um, married. And, and um, so if it had happened, you know, probably during that time. Um, but I don't think she would have been that comfortable. I think here we, we're trying to, they're trying to sell us a love story. They're trying to sell us like, uh, and actually the, the actors are very good because there, there is a good chemistry uh, between the, the two actors. So that that's really well done. But I just don't think that it's how Henry VIII operated. He's not really here to seduce, he's here to take. Um, you know, he's a king, whatever he wants, he has. Again, it's very romanticized. And again, I don't find it very believable. Who else knows about this? No one. Good. Well, that's how it will remain. Forever. But you cannot undo what has been done before God. And God's your mate, too. This scene is probably one of top three, one of the worst top three, top five <laughs> of the movie. I mean, it, to me, this is a really bad historical movie and it's nothing against Philippa Gregoria I just think that you know the fact that she wrote the novel and, and then it was taken into a movie I just think it could have been done much better um, and I'm not going to repeat myself about the fact that they're pitting against each other the two sisters I, I do think it's quite stupid you will be sent to France and stay there until you've learned your lesson what no father please how can you have done this? Here we have the scene, absolutely ridiculous, historically absolutely inaccurate. So we have Amber, who already um, was married. She said she consummated the marriage. Wow, wow, wow. And then she's sent to France, uh, you know, uh, to, to learn her lesson, which is again ridiculous because obviously she, you know, she had been in France uh, before. She was much younger when she was sent to France. And so here it just doesn't work at all. It just makes it look and really bad, really. Like like a woman who just does what she wants and follow her heart. Though like she probably was her own free spirit, as I've said so many times. But she would not have married in secret. She would not have consummated a marriage. I think here we tend to forget that Anne Boleyn was also extremely pious and religious. And that because we have this idea of her being the Protestant whore, you know, because of the Catholic propaganda with Catherine of Aragon, we tend to forget that actually Protestantism like grew in England. It, it, it didn't happen, you know, boom, it happened. So like, I think here we don't have a real and true representation of who she was. And this scene is just absolutely almost unbearable to watch because of the historical inaccuracies. The bad dynamic between daughter and son, again, read Lauren Mackay's book. Um, so just absolutely, honestly, absolutely annoying. There. Found one. 
looking for a great man scene. I mean, this is another one I would put like in a top five of most annoying scenes. But at the same time, what I like about this scene is Natalie Portman's performance. I think she's brilliant in that scene. I think she's, it, I, it would have never happened. <laughs> but I think that I like, I like, they really give her like, she's sassy, you know, like she's like, I, and I like it. And like, she's pushing the boundaries of men and she's pushing in many ways, the boundaries of the patriarchy. So a very annoying scene in terms of like historical accuracy again, but less annoying in terms of entertainment. And I think here what's depicted in that movie is that the real love story was between um, Henry and Mary and not Henry and Anne. And I think that's not true. I really don't think it happens. You just have to look. You know, my, my next video is going to be on Henry and Anne and I'm gonna go through the letters, the, the love story. Like when I say love story, don't get me wrong as well. I don't think it's a healthy love story. I think it's a toxic passion. But regardless, I think here we're really selling the story that it's actually um, just toxic. Um, Anne is toxic and uh, Henry is not toxic. He's just a, a, a man who's been played. And I don't think that's the truth. I think the one who played is Henry. He played Anne. Um, he tried to use her for having a male heir. And when she didn't give him what he wanted, she was of no use. So here again, like, you know, in terms of historical accuracy, I think we could do, we could do a bit better. My lord. This scene is very difficult to watch, mostly because, um, again, it's the portrayal of Anne Boleyn. She is depicted as someone who's calculating, manipulative, but also very mean. Don't get me wrong, I know that Anne Boleyn had a bad temper. I know that she hurt Catherine of Aragon, we're gonna discuss it as well. But here, it just doesn't seem right. The way they imply that Anne Boleyn made Henry choose between her and Mary. For me, the depiction of Anne Boleyn as such a bad person, bad sister, um, manipulative and, and, and sneaky, makes me very uncomfortable. Love is of no value without power and position. That is also quite a scene that is not working where Anne Boleyn said um, love is of no value. Like, what is love if you don't have power and status? Um, I think here again we have a depiction of Anne Boleyn that she was not real and true. And as I'm writing my book on Anne Boleyn, I realise that is not true, that I think in her part she's quite genuine with her feelings towards Henry. And that is why it comes such as a shock, um, what happens at the end. So again here, it's just not believable. It's just so far away from the historical Anne Boleyn. That scene is very interesting. Um, that scene, I think actually Catherine of Aragon is perfect. The Boleyn whores, two former ladies of mine. What did I do to upset you, that you should turn against me like this? You failed to give England an heir. And that upsets you so? What upsets the king upsets me. How dare you? Uh, I mean, well, she, call, she calls them the bull and horse, but uh, she, it is, it is spotless. Like we have Catherine of Aragon's feistiness and fire. And that is a scene that is believable. The reaction of Anne Boleyn, maybe not so much, though she would have been defiant. So I would give like, and that he pointed a, a, a really good rate here because she would have been, Anne Boleyn would have been defiant. But Catherine of, of Aragon here is perfect, perfect. The scene of Anne Boleyn at a judgment. Well, first of all, the trial of Anne Boleyn is very hard to read, very hard um, to write about. It is quite a difficult scene to watch because again, I want you to imagine that Anne Boleyn, the real Anne Boleyn, was judged by men who were saying absolutely horrible things about her, telling her when and where she committed adultery, saying that she forced her brother to put his tongue inside her mouth. Sorry, I'm gonna get a bit emotional. It's just like going through this trial was very, very hard to read and to imagine what she must have felt. Here, I like that they gave her like that kind of sassiness again. 
but I think we tend to forget that it really affected her as well. We know that she cried so much after it. We know that she was quite lost and we know that she said, but what's going to happen to my mother, Elizabeth Bolin? What is she going to think? And we know how much she cared for the lives of men. I'm sorry, for the lives of men who are going to die because of her. And that scene for me doesn't do justice to what Anne Boleyn had to go through and how she really, really tried to save their lives more than she tried to save hers. Um, I get very emotional when I talk about Anne Boleyn's um, tragic end because when you go through the sources you really have a sense of how horrible it was. Here that scene where Mary Boleyn tries everything for her sister, I mean it is sweet because again the movie is on her, the other Boleyn girl. But I don't like that to make her so sweet and so nice and so kind. We have to really destroy Anne Boleyn's reputation and even like we make Henry look nice and trust me when I say that he wasn't. Focus of the scene of the execution is as much on Mary Boleyn as it is on Anne Boleyn and here we have Anne Boleyn completely crumbling, completely crying. I like it here because it makes her more vulnerable because we have this kind of very manipulative, mean, bitchy person right throughout the movie and then at the end we see like the tears, we see the the frau woman but at the same time it doesn't really I mean she would have shown emotions I'm sure but I don't think she would have been like this and obviously the focus is more on Mary who's suffering losing her sister and I think here it's an interesting story because it must have been I mean Mary Boleyn lost both her siblings George and Anne and it must have been absolutely traumatic and something that we do not discuss enough the impact of that on her and her family and so I think here it, it's quite moving it's quite interesting overall I think this movie could have been massively improved I really don't like it though and I would not recommend it for you guys I'm sorry <laughs> I mean if you just want the entertainment you have nothing to do the acting is quite spectacular I mean like the casting is like wow amazing but the rest of it is not really good so read books more about it and then watch it in with popcorns and you know keep telling oh that is wrong that is wrong that is wrong because you will do that the entire movie <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that history police video thank you so much for watching and for your support and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!